In this video, we're going to learn how to concatenate two arrays into a new third array using C. The first thing we'll do is declare and initialize two int arrays. So we'll have int array one is equal to zero, one, two, three, four. And then int array two is equal to five, six, seven, eight, nine. So here we have two int arrays, both of length five. If we were to concatenate these two arrays, we would expect to get back a third array of length 10. And the array should contain 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Let's create a function that can concatenate these two arrays. The function will return a pointer to an int because we're going to dynamically allocate space on the heap for this new third array. And we're going to return a pointer to that array on the heap. We'll call the function concat, and the function will accept the first array as an argument. So we'll have int star a1. Now remember in C, when we pass an array to a function, what we're really passing is a pointer to the array. What really gets passed is the memory address of the first element in the array. So that's why the parameter here is a pointer. The next argument to the function is going to be the length of this array. So we'll have size underscore t len one. We're going to use size underscore t as a type because size underscore t can store larger positive integers than int. It can account for larger arrays. Then we'll have int star a2 for the second array and size underscore t len2 for the length of the second array. Now, because we're using dynamically allocated memory, we do have to include stdlib.h. So we can use functions like malloc and free. We'll also include the string.h library because the string.h library includes a function called memcopy, M-E-M-C-P-Y. That function will allow us to more easily copy the data from one array to another to help us perform this array concatenation. So we'll copy this here and paste it down here. And the first thing we'll do is dynamically allocate space for the new array. So we'll have int star new underscore array. This is going to be the pointer to our new array. Then we'll use malloc to dynamically allocate space for it. So we'll have malloc size of int multiplied by len1 plus len2. So malloc is going to return a pointer, which is really just a memory address for a block of memory that's been allocated for this new array. That pointer, that memory address, is going to be stored in new array. Now the size of that block of memory is determined by the argument to malloc. So here we're taking the size in bytes that it takes to store one int and we're multiplying it by the combined lengths of the arrays. So we're adding together the length of array one and the length of array two. And we're getting space for that many int values. So that will give us a block of memory that's large enough to store the new array. So next, we need to copy the values from the first array into this new array, followed by the values from the second array. Now, we could use loops to do this. Another way we could do it, though, is with memcopy. So memcopy will copy the data from one block of memory to another block of memory. So we could have this. Memcopy. And then we'll have new array followed by a1, followed by size of int multiplied by len1. So memcopy is going to copy data from this source memory address to this destination memory address. So we're going to copy from a1 to new array. The third argument specifies how many bytes to copy. Here, we're multiplying the size in bytes that it takes to store an int by the length of that first array. So we're going to copy all of the data from array one into the new array. Next, we could use memcopy to copy the data from array two into the new array. So we'll have memcopy. And for now, I'll just put new array here. Then I'll have a2, then size of int multiplied by len2. So very similar to the statement above, we're going to multiply the size in bytes that it takes to store an int by the length of array two. We're going to copy that many bytes from array two into the new array. The problem is we need to copy this data 
after the data from A1. New array is actually a pointer that stores the memory address of the first element in this new array. But that's where we already copied the data from the first array. We need to copy this data after the data that was copied from A1. To do that, we can use what's called pointer arithmetic. So we'll say here, new array plus len1. This operation will take the new array memory address and give us the first memory address after the data from the first array. That's where we want to copy the values from the second array, is from that point onwards. And basically, plus len1 does what's called pointer arithmetic. And it's going to add to the existing new array memory address such that we get a new memory address shifted over by the length of len1 number of ints in memory, which is exactly where we want to put the data for the second array. So now that we've copied the data from the two arrays, one after the other, into the new array, we can just return the new array pointer. So here we'll just have return new array. And next, we could test this function out. So up here in our main function, we'll create a pointer variable to store the pointer returned by concat. So we'll have int star and then array three is equal to, and we'll call concat. So we'll have concat and then array one, five, array two, and five. This should concatenate array one and array two and give us a pointer to the new array in memory. Now that array is stored in what's called dynamically allocated memory that we allocated using malloc. It's very important that we free dynamically allocated memory after we're done working with it. So that way our program doesn't have a memory leak. So down here, I'm gonna have free array three to make sure once we're done working with this memory that we free it. So before we free the memory, let's print out the values that are stored in array three to confirm that the array concatenation was successful. So here we'll have four int i is equal to zero, i is less than 10, which is the combined length of the two arrays, and then i plus plus. So here, we're taking the counter variable i from zero up until the length of this new array. And with each loop iteration, we'll print out the value in the array at the index of the counter variable i. So we'll have printf array three percent d is equal to percent d backslash n, and first we'll put the index followed by the value in the array at that index. We'll also print out a new line character after we output all the array elements. So we can save, compile, and run our program. And we can see here that array three does contain the values from zero to nine, which is exactly what we expected because array one had zero, one, two, three, four, and array two had five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that would be the correct concatenation of those two arrays. So this is how we can concatenate the contents of two arrays into a new third array using C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.